Mr. Stubbe. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Director Ray, in your opening statement, you described the January 6th protests as, quote, an angry mob attempting to, quote, undermine our institutions of government. You then went out to, you went on to paint BLM and Antifa violence as, quote, peaceful, lawful protests that, quote, others, quote, exploited to pursue violence. Why do you feel that you need to qualify Antifa and BLM violence as exploiting otherwise peaceful protests, but you didn't do the same for January 6th? Well, the, when I was referring to the uh, civil unrest and the violence that occurred among the civil unrest, I was speaking, obviously, of a period that covered an entire summer in protests across multiple cities, whereas, of course, in the January 6th instance, we're talking about a, um, a single event of massive significance, however, uh, in the course of one afternoon. And as I alluded to in response to earlier questions, uh, there were I think I've already said a couple times this morning uh, that there were on January 6th uh, not people who were under investigation, but there were peaceful protesters who were rowdy, and then there were the other two groups, and it's the other two groups that we're investigating and bringing criminal charges against. And one of those on January 6th um, that was in the Capitol, Ashley Babbitt, an unarmed protester, an Air Force veteran, was shot and killed in the Capitol by a police officer. Uh, Director Ray, yes or no, was the FBI involved in the investigation into Ashley Babbitt's killing? Um, I'm not sure I can answer that. I know that the decision to, uh, to close the investigation was made by DOJ. The, um, the officer well, well, involved, the the officer involved was not... If you were involved in it, then you can answer whether the FBI was involved in it. Uh, I'm not sure that we were involved in that one, but I, I just sitting here right now, I can't remember for sure, so I don't want to misspeak. Okay, well, on June 2nd, 2020, just days after the George Floyd incident you, incident, you gave a press conference in which you detailed the ways the FBI would assist with the Floyd investigation. Subsequently, the DOJ brought civil rights charges under 18 U.S.C. 242 against the officers involved. In a May 7, 2021 press release, DOJ publicly commended the FBI for its investigative efforts on the Floyd case. Yet in Ashley Babbitt's case, where civil rights charges under 18 U.S.C. 242 were also being considered by DOJ, the FBI didn't assist at all, and you're not sure that you were even involved in this investigation. So why did the FBI assist with the investigation of George Floyd's death, but not into Ashley Babbitt's death that occurred in the Capitol complex? Well, our decision to assist in the George Floyd case was based on, obviously, discussions with the Civil Rights Division under the prior administration and the Justice Department there. And the Ashley Babbitt case, I'm not trying to uh, create more confusion than is warranted. I'm just sitting here right now. I can't tell you for sure what role, if any, we played in that decision. So that's all I can really say on that one. Well, if, you, if you're not sure, then it obviously wasn't a very active role if you're not sure what involvement the FBI had on that. I, I, I wouldn't, I'm not sure I would say that, sir. Uh, we actually have 37,000 employees conducting thousands and thousands of investigations, and though I do my best to try to stay on top of as many of them as I can, sitting here right now oh, in the span of everything we're talking about, I can't say for sure whether or not we were involved. And how you were in the command center. So you would probably know if the FBI was involved in an investigation that occurred in an officer-involved shooting of an unarmed person on the Capitol complex if you were involved. As I said, I'm we've had hundreds of investigations. The most wanted website, there's an entire section entitled Capital Violence, targeting individuals who came to protest in D.C. on January 6th. Comparatively, little or no attention is paid to violent BLM and Antifa extremism. BLM and Antifa attacked the White House with President Trump inside of it last May and laid siege to the Mark O. Hatfield Federal Courthouse in Portland last summer. And the FBI doesn't seem interested at all. Can you explain what would appear to be a politically motivated discrepancy on the FBI's most wanted website. We used uh, social media and uh, putting out information and videos to the public, much as we have with January 6th, uh, in connection with the violence among the civil unrest over the summer. We got thousands and thousands of tips from the public in relation to the violence over the summer uh, and followed up on them. Uh, and in both cases, we used almost all 56 field offices. In both instances, we opened hundreds of investigations. In both instances, we conducted hundreds of arrests. We consider them both extremely serious. Uh, and as I've said several times over the course of this hearing today, we have one standard. And I don't care whether you're upset at our criminal justice system or whether you're upset at our elections. There's a right way and a wrong way in this country to do it under the First Amendment. And committing violence 
assaulting federal law enforcement and destroying property is not the way to do it. And that's my standard for the FBI. Gentleman's time has expired. The gentleman's time. The gentleman's time has expired. Christopher Ray was flat out lying right there, and the, and the fact is, uh, he is an incompetent director. He was not qualified for this job. I think I'm, you know, huge Trump supporter, but I think it was one of the biggest mistakes uh, of the Trump presidency was putting Christopher Ray in there, and uh, I think he showed it, especially in this his opening remarks that he made today, how biased he actually is, because everything that he said, especially about extremist violence was completely sided to the left. Everything that had to do with any type of group that calls themselves patriots or anything that happened on January 6th was noted and, and displayed by his language as something that is far extreme with very little, if any, people that were there that, to be peaceful. And he made it sound as though the left is mostly peaceful with just a few things. Everything that comes out of this guy's mouth is pushed to the left, but it's subtle. So if you've been you know, a prosecutor or a, a U.S. attorney, or if you've been in the FBI and you listen to his language, you can literally see this. And I, I, I think some of these congressmen and congresswomen actually saw this today, and I think they went after him, but he's not going to bend as far as that goes. I will tell you that I have spoken directly to FBI agents that are investigating January 6th, you know, um, issues, and ranging from individuals that uh, were in the Capitol to individuals who were not in the Capitol. One, one thing that stands out, the, the, the most recent conversation I had with an FBI, FBI agent here in Salt Lake indicated, he said he's never seen anything like this. They are given a mandate. They are to go out. They have been given the questions they're supposed to be asking. They have been given the way they're supposed to proceed on this case. They don't have individualized authority. It is all coming from Washington, D.C. I've spoken to prosecutors that are prosecuting these cases. And this is not individualized justice. They are lumping everybody into the same category, and they are treating them uh, like, un unlike I've ever seen in a case. Uh, the Department of Justice is supposed to address every single case, unless it's a conspiracy case, according to the criminal conduct of that individual. They're not doing that. None of the prosecutors mm. have authority. It's all coming straight from Washington, D.C. There is so much energy put towards these people, and there's not the same energy put towards Antifa. Why didn't he explain that? Why couldn't he explain that? Well, I don't think he could explain it because, again, he was making this into uh, more of a political uh, stand. And, you know, he, he said there were three categories of people on January 6th. He failed to completely mention the people who were literally invited into uh, the Capitol building by the, the Capitol Police. And the majority of the people that were there did nothing. It, he made it sound as though if you came on the Capitol grounds, you were an extremist. And that is just not the case. There were some violent people there. There were some people that went into the Capitol that did some very nefarious things. But his category, uh, the way he categorized these people was absolutely wrong. And the way that the FBI has systematically as uh, Brett just uh, pointed out there, been told how to investigate January 6th, they've systematically been kept from truly investigating or going after the leftists. And that is so clear because of the way that there's just nothing going down about these individuals on the left. And I'll, I'll just say one other thing. In all my time in the FBI, the only white supremacist case that I ever saw, and I was in New York the entire time, was prison-related. There was no white supremacy, uh, massive uh, agenda going on in the United States, and it's not happening now. And it's another example of how they use these things and push them out in the media. When you think about what Antifa did last summer, the number of federal properties that they destroyed um, or defaced, and the money that they caused to small businesses, the, the, the police officers who they injured, the Secret Service members, they really haven't been held accountable to the same type of behavior that they did all last summer. Why not? They have not been. I mean, you think about what domestic terrorism is. When you burn down a police station and you take over city blocks, that's domestic terrorism. And they have not been held accountable. Uh, I'm ashamed to, to say that, you know, my, my former office, you know, the Department of Justice, I, I wish I could see courage. I wish I, I could see U.S. attorneys standing up. You know, it's interesting. I, I represent an individual who... Um, went into the Capitol, um, was told she could go in, 
and was actually pointed by a security guard to the direction she should go. And she's being prosecuted. She's being charged with uh, misdemeanors. She, she has no criminal history. She thought the only other capital she's ever been in is a state capital that's open 24 seven. She thought you could walk in. She, so there's a, there's a wide disparity a, 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 between you know, who Chris Ray is identifying and they wanted to prosecute every single person that was there to send a message. And that's what this is, it's message prosecuting. And, and, and that's mm -hmm. never a, a, an appropriate decision by a prosecutor.